Okay, let's go through the wrap up of the telephone section. Um, here we go. Remember, a caller's first impression of your company is formed by how well that call is handled by the person who answers it. Here are the 10 most important points to make sure you deliver an exceptional customer service on the telephone. Answering a business call. We always use the three-part greeting and it will get your call started smoothly. The three parts are buffer words, the company and the department name or your name. A pleasant buffer phrase such as good morning or thank you for calling XYZ sets the stage for the call. A buffer part is less important though than the other two parts, so it's not critical if it gets cut off by the caller at the beginning of the conversation. Follow the buffer phrase with the name of your company or department and then your name. Now, the caller assumes that you're going to help them when they answer the phone, so they'll tell you uh, how you can help them without you having to ask, how may I help you? We don't need that. Anything you say after your name just makes the caller forget your name. So, good morning, Asia University, this is Keith, is a good format for an incoming call. But maybe the call isn't for me. Maybe we have to put the caller on hold. Before you do this, make sure you let the caller know why you need to put them on hold. Ask if they are able to hold and then wait for their response. Now most callers hate being ordered to hold with no control over the situation, so asking is important. If the caller is not able to hold, handle their needs by offering options such as someone calling them back. For example, I need to see George to get that information for you. His office is just down the hall. So it will take me a few moments. Are you able to hold? If the caller says, yes, thanks, then you're good to go. If he says, sorry, I haven't got time, take his number and then get back to him with the information. The third thing we must remember is always remember to thank the caller for holding. When a caller has to be put on hold and they get placed immediately into a holding queue, as you do when you ring the bank, it can be very frustrating. You can ease that frustration by putting the caller on a positive path by thanking them for holding. This immediately bonds with the caller and puts the conversation back on a positive note. It makes you and your company stand out above the competition. For example, thank you for holding. Asia University, this is Keith speaking. The fourth thing to remember is what we call monogramming. Remember to monogram the call. Now, monogramming, what's that? Well, people love to hear their name, so using it sets a positive tone for the call. A call comes in. Hi, my name is Kevin Wong, and I need to change a delivery date for an order I placed yesterday. Responding with, no problem, Mr. Wong, I can help you. My name is Sheridan. What do you need it changing to? If you've had previous dealings with the caller, and on first name terms, that's even better. Using the caller's name, making sure to say it correctly, is a great way of letting them know you're going to help them, and do ask for help with pronunciation and spelling if it's a tricky name. This tells the caller that you're happy to give them your time to make sure they receive good service. For example, a caller saying, would you please tell him that Keith Gillibrand called? might be responded to by, that's an unusual name, can you spell it for me please sir? That's sure to leave a great first impression to the caller. Fifth thing that we should remember, try to avoid excuses at all costs. Callers are looking for help and solutions, not excuses why you cannot help. Which excuses annoy me the most? Well, things like, sorry, but that's our policy, or our computers are down. It's important that you take responsibility for the calls you answer, and that you tell your callers that you intend to help. If you are the person who receives first contact with the customer, 
take 100% of the responsibility to guide the caller to the right place where there will be resolution. Instead of telling the customer, that's not my department, here's a better way of dealing with it. Caller, hello, this is Mr. White. I have some questions about an invoice I received. Receiver yourself. Hello, Mr. White. Okay, I understand. You actually need to speak with Johnny in Accounts Receivable. I'm in the customer service, but I can go ahead and connect you directly. Just in case we get connected, disconnected, Johnny's extension is 334. Is that okay? 99% of the time, the caller will be very happy with your response. The sixth important point to remember, be prepared. Now, the motto be prepared isn't just for Boy Scouts. Nothing makes you look more unprofessional faster than not being prepared to take a message when you've answered a call. Always keep paper and pen or pencil next to the phone at all times. Writing a message word for word is the best way to make sure you don't mangle it. Here's a good tip. Most people don't like leaving messages on voicemail. So always be ready to take a message or information from a customer the old fashioned way. Seventh point we should recall, giving spoken feedback signals. By using a combination of different words or short phrases that we've practiced in the lesson, we can acknowledge that we've heard and understood what the caller has said. Be sure to read back some of what the caller has said. This is a form of active listening that we will discuss later in meetings. Spoken feedback signals are even more important on the phone than face-to-face. -face. Without them, customers wonder if you are actually listening. If they've been disconnected or if you're even able to help them. If you're adding notes on a computer, tell the caller so they know that the typing sound they hear is related to their call and not you typing a text message to your friend while taking notes from them. Another important point, avoid making mouth noises. When you're talking to someone on the phone, rattling your pencil in your mouth is not good. Such noises annoy and alienate the other person. The mouthpiece of a telephone is a microphone and it amplifies sounds on the receiving end. While on a call, don't drink, don't hum, and don't chew gum. Little tip, work to avoid annoying noises as much as you can. On the call, always remember to control the conversation because callers sometimes get off topic. In such cases, take control of a conversation. Rapport building is important and you must build that rapport whilst remaining in control of your call. If things begin to get off track, ask a question related to the call's purpose as a subtle hint to get back to things on track. Customers appreciate your handling their needs efficiently. The last part of this call and on telephone section, a positive last impression is something you must always leave. A positive last impression counts as much as, if not more, than the for good first impression. End your conversation with something positive. Let callers know you are glad they called and do say that you look forward to hearing from them again. This last impression is usually the, the last thing a caller remembers about the entire call. A simple, I'll let the engineer know and he'll take care of it for you. He's one of our best guys and we really appreciate your business, Mr. Trump. Thanks for calling. Most callers will usually just say, thank you. But remember to add, you're welcome, before saying goodbye and hanging up.